How's it going, guys? We have a past level question for pharmacology for diabetes for step one and step two, okay? I'll tell you some very basic high yield points regarding these pharmacologic agents, uh, exactly what you need to know for the exam. No waste our fucking time, all right? So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like, really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M E H L M A N underscore medical, links down below. Find me on Telegram, links to the Telegram group or channel down below. No start the clip. So 41 year old woman with type 1 diabetes. Four month history of worsening pain or lower abdomen. Physical exam shows a tender superpubic mass. Vitals are normal, HbA1c 9%, urinary pregnancy test normal, urinalysis 1 plus protein and 1 plus, ba 1 plus bacteria. Hoist void volume 300 milliliters, catheter is inserted, nitrofurin 20 is administered. Question wants to know uh, the most appropriate pharmacologic therapy to prevent recurrence of her condition. So a lot to unpack here, right? As I said, I'll stay concise. You should know that clearly she has long-standing diabetes. Uh, type 1 diabetes is going to be diagnosed usually in childhood, and the HbA1c of 9%. Anything above 6.5% is what we see in diabetes. It's also the threshold for diagnosis. It's to my observation across NBME exams that HbA1c in the sevens is considered tolerable, quote unquote. Okay, I say that somewhat uh, uh, subjectively because. Across the NBME content for 2CK, they'll give you a diabetic who has all sorts of issues going on. And if they give an HbA1c in the sevens, that's the way uh, for the NBME to communicate. We're not concerned about glycemic control, obviously under 6.5 ideal. But if they want uh, you to be uh, aware uh, for the HB regarding the HbA1c, as far as uh, the point of the question in front of you, they're going to give it uh, in the nines or above. Okay, so in this question, they're telling us HbA1c is too high. Uh, we have poor glycemic control in this patient. The tender suprapubic mass, especially regarding negative pregnancy test here, is a full bladder. Okay, so she has neuropathy to the bladder. Okay, I didn't mention other details such as peripheral neuropathy, of course. Okay, I mean, you would expect peripheral neuropathy to precede any uh, neuropathy to the bladder, but we can get hypocontractile bladder overflow incontinence due to diabetes. Okay, and she probably does have a cystitis. Okay, so I jumped a few steps here. If this is a surgery question and the, and it, and the vignette ends at her post fed volume is 300 milliliters, full stop. They say nothing else. They say, what's the next best step of management? Answer on 2CK is insertion of a catheter. Okay, you got to relieve the urinary obstruction. Okay, so she could have the high creatinine, okay, post renal. All right, so catheter insertion is first line. We'll give antibiotic. It doesn't matter which one we use, Nitro nitrofurin twin classic for cystitis. Okay, uh, you can give TMP SMX, that's also classic, trimethrin sulfamethoxazole. Uh, for urinary tract infections. So, but I'm taking it a step further and I say, which pharmacologic agent will prevent recurrence of this patient's condition? Post void volume should be under 50 milliliters. Okay, if you get a question where it's like 60, you got to use your fucking head and say, well, it's probably not elevated. If the US Millie wants uh, you to be thinking, uh, wants you to be aware of uh, overflow incontinence, they're going to give you a post void volume, 300, 400 milliliters. Okay, same for uh, BPH questions. So, question here uh, which of the following agents most likely to prevent recurrence of this patient's condition? Let's just whip through the answer choices here. We'll go backwards. Terezosin, alpha 1 antagonist, wrong fucking answer. It's used for BPH. Okay, a lot we can talk about, but terezosin, tamsulosin, uh, they're just classic off one antagonists uh, that will loosen the internal sphincter of the bladder, okay, and that can just help relieve some of the uh, obstruction in BPH. Wrong fucking answer. Pylocarpine, wrong answer, so muscarinic receptor agonist. This is used for glaucoma, okay, classically closed angle glaucoma. You dump this on the eye, uh, topically all right so very important agent to be aware of muscarinic receptor agonist in this case wrong fucking answer oxybutynin wrong answer so this is a muscarinic receptor antagonist used for urge incontinence okay so urge incontinence is going to be hyperactive detrusor detrusor instability uh, classically patients who have multiple sclerosis some students have uh, been hysterical about uh, MS supposedly causing overflow incontinence. I've never fucking seen it on any NVME content. Okay. So any MS question I've ever come across has always been 
Virgin continents, okay? So I'm not talking about fucking QBank. We're talking about NBME content right now. Big fucking difference. So if you encounter a new NBME question somewhere where it's MS with overflow continents, you can show me and I'll be like, wow, okay. Like I'm humbled. I've never seen that before. Okay, so urgent continents for MS. Also urgent continents for uh, women who are perimenopausal, okay? And also uh, postmenopausal, just old women, classically uh, urgent continents. And you're going to give anti-muscarinics oxybutynin as our classic agent here. All right. So uh, I'll just keep moving through. In this case, wrong answer clearly, but I'll just keep moving through. Mirror Begrin, wrong fucking answer. This is a beta-3 agonist. Students get fanatical about weird sounding drugs. I don't believe I've ever seen this assessed on any NBME content. All right. So oxybutynin is our answer for urgent continence. Mirror Begrin could be used for urgent continence in theory. Okay, I, I've probably mentioned it in some of my resources because you could be aware of it, right? If I don't if I don't mention it, I'm going to get nine DMs from a student, from different students over the next year saying, why isn't Mira Begrin mentioned? So Mira Begrin, beta-3 agonist, could be used in theory for urgent continence, never seen it assessed. Carbacol, wrong answer. So muscarinic receptor agonist, this is classically used for glaucoma. Okay, that's that's all you need to know. Just muscarinic. Same with pilocarpine. Pilocarpine more effective, more powerful than carbacol, but carbacol classically used for uh, open angle glaucoma. Bethanicol is our correct answer. Okay, so bethanicol is a muscarinic receptor agonist that is classically used for overflow incontinence due to diabetes. All right, so you might say, well, I don't get it. Couldn't you also use carbacol or pilocarpine somehow because they're also muscarinic receptor agonists? Sure. Okay. If we want to be like theoretical about things, but when we talk about actual NBME content, this isn't even a gotcha question on my end. It really isn't. This is just strictly what shows up on the NBME exams. Carbacol, uh, sorry, carbacol glaucoma. Okay. The fanicol, super fucking high yield that you know that this is a muscarinic receptor agonist used for overflow incontinence. We have a hypocontractile bladder due to neuropathy here. So this is going to stimulate the detrusor muscle, okay? Help mitigate the overflow incontinence. We don't give this in a BPH first line because the issue with BPH is the obstruction, but most older men who have BPH with overflow incontinence, if you relieve the obstruction with an alpha-1 antagonist or even finasteride, a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor, uh, you, you might not need bethanicol in those patients, okay? So bethanicol is used for overflow incontinence due to diabetes, super high yield oxybutynin for urge incontinence. And then tangentially, real fucking quick, if we had stress incontinence, which is weakened pelvic floor muscles, where they can say downward mobility of the vesicourethral junction, usually women who've had uh, multiple childbirths, but it need not be the case in the vignette, you are not going to medicate those patients. Do not fucking choose drugs for those patients. You're simply going to do Kegel exercises. Those are pelvic floor exercises. If insufficient, you can do mid-urethral sling, although surgical management, I haven't really seen it much on any NBME exam. It's classically just pelvic floor exercises. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel, and I appreciate your time. That's it.